feel so happy here. It is a bit like a spiritual home for me, Wentworth. Birdie, birdie, birdie. Come on. Right, hold your head. No! No! Hi, and just carried on past. You cannot miss the green with a wedge in your hand. It's like missing your mouth with a fork. Yes! Yes! Woo! Hallelujah! What am I talking about? Ah! Right, okay. Let's play some golf. Come on. Hi guys, and welcome back to On The Road With Iona and another episode of Chasing The Red. This is a particularly special episode today because we are at Wentworth, just outside of London. And this is a very special place for me personally. Not only is it an epic golfing destination, but I've got a particularly close relationship with Wentworth because I used to be a member here as a scholar when I was just starting my very own golfing journey. So I moved down to Wentworth on a scholarship when I played off a handicap of four. And I think at that time I'd been playing golf roughly a year and a half to two years. And I had a coach here called Christian Baker who I used to come and see and I spent every single day of my life, seven days a week at Wentworth, practicing my golf, occasionally seeing Christian and 12 months after being based here, playing off a four handicap, I played off plus four. So I have some very good memories here. During that time, I played as part of the ladies section and they were really, really welcoming to me. They took me under their wing and let me play in their competitions, which was pivotal in me being able to get my handicap down and really understand what it takes to score around a golf course. And I managed to break two of the course records, the East and the Edinburgh. And of course, there is the West course as well, which is known as the championship course. And that's just behind me. That's the first tee over there. You've got the beautiful putting green there. I never managed to get that record, but I do have one on the East and the Edinburgh. And today we are going to play the East golf course. It's a real walk down memory lane for me because I have so many wonderful memories from playing here. And it was so important in my own golfing journey. The time I spent at Wentworth was massive in helping me become the golfer I ultimately became. I was, um, I was working last week. I was absolutely knackered when I got back and then I had a day off yesterday just relaxing and resting. And so today my body's actually feeling quite good. Funny story that very first golf ball I struck in England was here on this driving range. I came down in the middle of December to see if I was gonna be eligible and allowed to qualify for this scholarship program. And I hit balls in that bay just over there third from the end in snow, it was snowing. And I hit a couple of seven irons in front of a coach called Simon Holmes, who you may have seen on Sky. I hit a few and he said, right, I've seen enough. This girl, this girl's got it. So I owe a lot to Simon for letting me onto the program in the first place. And then it would turn out that I'd come here every day for the whole year, pretty much thereafter. And I practiced on the straight driving range. I spent more time here than I did in my own bed. You know, and they didn't have all these facilities. They were beautiful facilities here always, but now they've got Trackman and they've really upgraded everything here at Wentworth. All right, I'm feeling warm. I think I've hit enough shots. Let's get to the first tee of the East Course. We are one minute early. <laughs> Hello. Hi. You okay? Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Do you know the story of why I'm filming this video? No. So I used to be a member here and many, many minutes ago, okay. I've got the course record oh, nice. as a lady off the ladies tee. Yeah. And today I'm going to play the course from the ladies tee to see how close I can get to that course record. Oh, yeah. So it's a big day. It's a big yeah. day. <laughs> Wish me luck anyway. Thank you. So like I say, I'm going to play off the reds today because that's what I did during the course record and it feels only fair that I give it a crack from the same tees. Normally, as, a, as having played as a professional, a lot of the time I play with the guys, I do play off the men's tees. When I played with Rick Shields in both of his videos, we just play off the same tees, off the tips. And that's because it's more sociable and I hit it just about far enough to get away with that. But it'll be really nice today to, to oh God, so many memories, like flooding, genuinely flooding back to me right now. So I'm playing with the Titleist 15. It's got on the road with Iona on the side. Emily's gonna keep my score. Oh, 
that old plate. Up the right hand side. 118 yards is what I've left myself. And it's playing a couple, a couple of yards uphill. I remember this shot used to play a couple of yards uphill and it's on a bit of an upslope too, it's perfect. right at it. Spun a bit back but should be up there. Okay, two tier green and I'm on the wrong tier. Not really what I'm looking for. That was a bit steamy. Crikey. Whew. Well, I didn't actually have any putts before I teed off, which was a mistake. <laughs> do not do that at home. Rammed it past, but got the one back. Par to start, happy with that. Take a look at this. Hole, oh, absolutely stunning. One of the best tee shots on the East Course is the second hole. I'd love to be teeing off from the tips here. 421 yards, stroke index four. Wonderful, but we're gonna go forward and find the reds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put my score in this first line. Then I'm gonna tick if I hit the fairway. Did I hit the green? How many putts did I have? And then my scrambles. So my score was a four. I hit the fairway, I hit the green. I had two putts, so it doesn't matter for the scramble. And that's what I'm gonna do for the whole day. And I'm gonna see what I learn at the end of the day. 400 yards straight at that bunker. Just a little bit left of it is my line. Perfect. Kick left or right. <laughs> okay, kicked right, so it's not the angle I was looking for, but it's good enough. 135 yards left. Little nine iron. Just gonna take it a little bit right of the flag. Man. Working really hard in my alignment because I've got a habit of aiming way right at the moment. Keep coming. Yes. Ho ho. Okay, it looks a little bit long. So it should be on the green and I'll have a putt for eagle. As you can see, a little bit long, but I've left myself an outside chance of an eagle putt here. That would be great to get this round going. So it's all breaking from left to right. Oh. <sighs> Gave it a good run. Okay, a birdie. Pretty happy about that. Birdie, birdie, birdie. Come on, one under par. So first birdie of the day, hit the fairway, hit the green in regulation, and I had two putts. And I'm gonna circle it, because it was a birdie. Right, the next hole, par four, stroke index eight. It's a short hole, and if you do get a good drive away, it's another good birdie hole. However, you have got to carry this gully and it does kick hard from, from left to right and there's all sorts of trouble on the right hand side. So you can reach for the courage and take on the green, which obviously I'm gonna do, but you gotta be prepared that trouble can lurk here at the third hole. I remember driving the green here a few times. If the wind was in my favor, I could drive the green. You need a little fade, so that's what I'm gonna try and do. Keep cutting. Yes. All right, we're up there. I do remember during the, it was the ladies club championship that broke the course record. It was what's called the Tiger Cup and the tee was off this forward tee. And I remember driving the green. I think I could hit it further then than I can now because I didn't have an injury to contend with, but I don't mind that I, you know, I still can hit my driver, you know, carry it about 240 get it running out to 260, 270 on a good day. So, you know, and if you get firm, fast links, you can, you can have loads of fun. 
I don't mind that I have to play with what I've got now. I'm just happy that I get to play at all. Right, so I've left myself a really, really tricky shot, which is to be expected. As we said, it's, it can be a drivable hole, but it plays all the way uphill and into the wind today. So uh, it's deceptively long. It might say like 280, 290 on the scorecard, but it's more like 320, 330. And I've left myself just like a 40 yard flick, which is a really tricky little shot because if I was playing at home in Scotland, there's no doubt about it. I would just keep this low and chip and run it. But because I'm playing in England and it's more grassy, this Heathland course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to play it slightly differently. I'm gonna take my 52 degree and play a low pitch shot. Just try and land it on the front of the green. I don't wanna play this 60 degree cause there's a bit of wind in the air today. It's difficult to predict it. So I'm gonna keep it a little bit lower. Go on. Yes. Love that, love that. Part for birdie coming up. What I like to do sometimes is to come below, below the putt and have a look from this direction. And then I'll kind of go to this sort of halfway point, but never standing on the line, cause that's not allowed. And just kind of get an idea of how it's gonna break. Some people use aim point. I don't use aim point. A lot of the guys do on tour though. So they obviously think it's doing something good for their game but for now I'm, I'm very much a feel putter and I like to just play with feel <laughs> so close but so far oh that's a real opportunity gone by I thought I had it but it just it just really fired off there never mind a par okay par three 153 yards and that pin is tucked wow it's really tucked wind into the face a little bit little seven iron i really really struggle to hit a fade this requires a fade if i want to get it anywhere near this flag and i've just been fitted for a new set of irons which are the new t200 sorry t100s and the has a slightly thinner sole which i think i hope is going to help me to shape the ball better but for now, um, I'm definitely gonna have to go for kind of middle of the green here. And if I can get just a yard of fade, I'd be very happy. Cue the four yard draw. <laughs> All right, on the green. As I'm going around here, there's so many things that I remember learning in my golf that really helped me at the time to improve my scoring and then ultimately improve my handicap. One of the great bits of advice I got was to improve your par three scoring. If you just focus on trying to hit the middle of the green and get a par on every par three in a round of golf, you are guaranteed to save shots. And it, it really, really helped me. Go on. All right, a par, a par three. Never a bad score. But you can see when you're hitting fairways and you're hitting greens, just how important the flat stick is to scoring into the red. We've made it to the fifth hole and it's a par four stroke index 10, little under 300 yards. And I remember this hole, the approach is where it gets really tricky. So let's see if I can get a good drive away first of all. Huh. That's in the bunker. I don't think I, I took a driver off this tee back in the day, so a bit of a mistake there. I've got a, a fairway bunker shot now, which is gonna be quite tricky, all depending on the lie I've got in there. Uh-oh. So actually, my eyesight's not as good as I thought it was. The ball didn't reach the bunker, so that's a bit of a relief. It's just landed on the upslope. And I've got a little flick left onto the flag which is great. Listen, I don't mind bunker shots that much and it would have been probably more interesting for this video if it was in the bunker, but <laughs> it's not in the bunker and we're trying to, we are trying to break this course record. So 
listen, you just got to stick with me here. Um, okay, I've got 51 yards and there's a little bit of a backstop behind this flag, so not much room to the right of it. All right, it's a mystery. Let's go up and see. Quite interesting, this, in terms of stats, I've missed a fairway here because I've come through and that, that goes down as a missed fairway because it's a course management error. I could have been in that bunker. I didn't think it through properly and I didn't take the time to measure how far away this bunker was and when I ran out of fairway. So that is a on the old card. Oh, she's stuck on the hill. Can you believe that? How has that not come back down? It's definitely going to move from left to right. Not a lot though. Hold your head. No! Oh! <laughs> it's absolutely driving me bananas. Oh, four. Mark me down as a four. Whoa! Turning the corner here, you're probably now getting an idea of actually how windy it is today. It might look like a flat cam day, but there's breeze in the air and it is causing havoc, especially on the putting green. I think that last putt got a little bit of a gust. Ah. One thing you can also do when it comes to stats is you can mark on the approach shot. If you hit the green, you can just put a number like 10 feet or nine feet. Give you an idea of actually how close you're, you're hitting it to the hole because that can be a really good stat to know as well. But I remember I used to, I used to cut at the end of a round, I used to go back inside, get my computer out, go onto my stats system and I could remember every single shot. I never had to really write anything down because I could remember it all crystal clear. And I think, yeah, most golfers can do that. Right, this is a tough hole. Just before the, the halfway house, even though it's not halfway, six, you get, the, you get the halfway house after six holes on the East Course, which is always nice because you get to take a little minute. So it's another par four, stroke index four plays about 320 yards. It's a really narrow fairway, this, and it all kicks from left to right. But I'm not here for second place, so I'm gonna get the big dog out. I'm just gonna see what it is to carry that bunker on the left-hand side, since I've nearly made that mistake in the last hole. Right, it's 230 to carry that bunker on the left-hand side. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna hit it over the right edge of that. Yes. Go on, ball. Nice kick forward. Okay, another fairway found. Okay, 68 yards. I'm gonna take my 52 again. Sit. Ah, a little bit aggressive there. That is just not good enough, really. I've gone past the flag, left myself a hideous downhill putt. I'm even through the fringe, so it's just not good enough. I should have left myself something below the hole. No. Oh. Stop. Woo. Choo choo train. <sighs> that hurts. That really, really hurts. A bogey with a wedge in my hand. You cannot miss the green with a wedge in your hand. It's like missing your mouth with a fork. Hello. Hiya. Right, this is the halfway house on the East Course after six. And oh, I loved it in here. I remember coming in and just always getting a little hot chocolate and having a little break, but I've got some food for thought. I'm just gonna sit down, give myself a stern talking to for a second before we keep going. So I'm just sitting, having a look at my score to this point. And I've made one birdie, which just isn't really good enough. And I think there's obviously loads of opportunity to come, so I'm not gonna get my knickers in a twist, but I've kept a, a tick where I've hit the green or the fairway. I've kept a record of how many putts I've had. And you can see to this point, I've just had two putts, I've not had any one putts, and that's why my scoring isn't quite taking fire yet, but it'll come. You've got to hold putts if you want to sc score well. I missed one fairway, that's a missed fairway, even though I hit a perfectly good shot. I didn't think properly about how far I had to run out of fairway, so I missed the fairway. 
and then I had an opportunity on six to get up and down and I didn't so that's zero from one and at the end I'll say I've got six opportunities to scramble how many from six did I make all righty this is a par three stroke index 12 and this is I think this is the border between Surrey and Berkshire crosses to two counties Wentworth and I think this is the actual border for the counties 180 yards down breeze smooth five iron <sighs> caught that heavy I came out the hut and totally not concentrating just need to get it up and over this heather and take my medicine really All right, a little bit of right to left at the end and left to right at the start. No, it's on the wrong side. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Another one slips by. All right, that is very disappointing. Very, very disappointing, but loads more opportunity to come. So I'm just going to mark down that I got a four. I, there wasn't a fairway, I missed the green, had two putts and I didn't get up and down. So that's zero from two so far in the scrambling. It's a par four, stroke index two, 401 yards with a crosswind to date. So this is going to be two good shots. Yes. Ah, there she is. Let's play some golf, come on. Right, I think that was probably my drive of the day and I feel like I've really got to focus in now. It's been a bit average to say the least. I just don't know what my expectations are. It's so, so strange because I've played so little golf actually keeping a score in the last few years. So I do feel a bit like a duck out of water here. But anyway, I've had a really nice drive there. I found the fairway and I've got 123 yards left. I feel that wind is really blowing around. So it's definitely helping. So I've got this 48 degree in my bag and I'm just going to hit a little one of these. I remember this green all kicks from left to right. It's looking good. Go. All right, she's up there. She's up there. Putt for birdie, coming up. Hold your head, hold your head. Oh dear, okay. <sighs> Ah. All right, this is par. Okay, another column filled out. Par, fairway found, green found, two parts. It's too many parts there, you see. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, four, sixteen parts to this point. It's not, it's not quite good enough for what I'm looking for, but it can be really helpful just to give you an idea of where your game's at in the day. But look, guys, look what we've got. It's a par five. Really good opportunity to try and get myself back into the red. Let's go. Yes, oh, felt good. We found another fairway, which is the good news. Really got that one out the screws and now I've left myself uh, 180 yards in, a little soft five iron. Get down. Ah, uh, horrible kick. It's just off the green. Uh. Okay, it might be a little chip chip for an eagle. Can we chip it in? That's the question. Right, here I am, just off the green. And a little chip for eagle. I've got my 52 degree wedge and it's just a standard little chip shot. Bread and butter stuff. Go on. Break, break, break. So close. I'll tap this in for birdie though. 131 yards. That's what I'm getting. Par three. This is hole number 10. It is a nine iron all day long. Nice committed nine iron. 
Go on. Go. Pin high. It's a good shot. That was a nice little nine iron. See the ball's pitched. Come back a yard. So that's great. It's a beautiful little par three, this one. And I, I have a distinct memory on this hole. I know I birdied this hole on the, on the day and I hold a really long putt. It must've been 50 foot for birdie. And by that stage, I just couldn't believe it. It was like, I was just holding everything. I was just having one of those days. It was just wonderful. Come on. No! Why ball? It had a look, it just went whoop, high and just carried on past. Oh God, this is absolutely driving me bananas. I think I'm gonna have to switch my ball. Okay, this ball's getting fired. <laughs> Guess what? Another par. Despite the lack of any putts going in the hole, I'm still smiling and having a wonderful time here at Wentworth. It's just so good to be out playing golf and I'm so grateful that I've, that I've invented this series, Chasing the Red, because it's the greatest excuse for me to be able to play some more golf. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. We've made it to stroke index one, toughest hole on the East Course off the red tees. It's a 400 yard par four, dog leg from left to right, and it plays all the way uphill. So it plays at least 40 yards more than that. So it is a bit of a beast of a hole. I have changed my ball. I'm still playing a Titleist 15. It's actually Titleist 15. And you can see on the side, it says on the road with Iona. If you'd like one of these balls, then leave me a comment in the comments box below and I'll see if I can get you one. Perfect. 141 yards is my number. Flying nicely in the fairway. Wind, what are you doing wind? Right to left, helping a little bit. It's an eight iron. Yes, finally, go on. That's a golf shot. Right, you can see it's pitched into this little upslope here. And that's probably my shot of the day. This is nothing but net. Go on. Yes! Woo! Stroke index one. And finally, finally, a putt drops. Hallelujah. <sighs> Come on, finally. Okay, I've got, I've got a few holes to fill out, but I really want to fill that one out more than anything. I got a three, I hit the fairway, I hit the green, one putt, hallelujah. Previous hole was also a three, no fairway involved, find the green, and I two putted. One putt on the par five, and I got one out of one up and down. So my scrambling, finally, I've got one out of three so far. Alrighty, we are back in the red, baby. So, we've got a lovely little par three here now, 131 yards, perfect nine iron. Stop. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see where she's ended up. I think she's on the green. Right, look at all these bunkers. I think they've added a few since I was last here. One, two, three, four. I'm definitely flirting with the one at the back, but it's all right. It's just on the fringe. Gave it a good go. Part. But realistically, that shot in there with a nine iron again to miss the green, you know. Okay, I've not missed it by much, but just like those little bits of sharpness that I feel I don't have in my game right now, 
which is exciting because there's room for improvement. Hole number 13, 350 yards, stroke index three, also up the hill, which is what makes it quite tricky. Perfect. My driver's behaving really nicely today. Really happy with that tee shot. And I've left myself 64 yards. Wind is now sort of coming off the right and helping. So it's gonna knock the ball out of the air. So I'm gonna keep this low anyway. Go on, big hop. Yes. Hold your line. Yes. That. The thing I had to think about there, not that I've putted well today, so I'm not in a position to preach about putting, but I just, it was such a tricky putt, down quick, left to right. I just thought all you can do, Iona, is hit this out the middle of the putter and start it on the line you want to, and it might go in. But I don't think I've hit, truthfully, many putts today out the middle of the putter. And it's such an under, underrated skill, being able to hit it flush out the middle of the putter. So, I'm really going to think about that on the way in, see how many, many, many more putts I can hold. But I believe we're two under par. Hit the fairway, hit the green, one putt. That's the dream. That is the dream scenario. Okay, par four, stroke index 17. That's because it's a short hole and we're playing from an elevated tee. It's actually a really fun hole, this. But before I get into it, I just want to say about playing off the forward tees, the red tees. You know, you might be thinking, oh, well, this is, you know, this, this doesn't count because you're playing off a forward tee. And I really think it does count because, okay, for me, as my game got better, I started to play from a further back tee. But as you're seeing today in my round of golf, it ultimately still comes down to the putts. And you've got to find fairways, you've got to find greens, and you've still got to hold putts. And I used to play with a guy here quite regularly. I'll keep him anonymous, but he played golf in America, a fantastic player. He was a big strapping guy and he could hit it an absolute mile he played off about plus four and he was a phenomenal golfer and at the time probably the best golfer I, I played with played with a lot of purple that's the clue if he's watching this he'll know who it is but he went to college in America and the, the college coach over there got all of the team who were very talented golfers to play from the forward tee and the reason he did this was because he wanted them to get comfortable with that feeling of being one two three maybe four under par and that is a, something that you have to learn to handle and it's really it can be really uncomfortable being under there and it can also just be good for your confidence to have lots of putts for birdie and have lots of wedges in your hand getting into the green so if you are someone that always takes yourself to the back tee you know, I would really recommend once in a while, just take yourself forward and have a round of golf because it's not any easier, but it might, you might have more chances and therefore it can be really good for your confidence. And by the time you do go back a tee or two tees, you might just, you know, the shoulders might just be a little bit broader and you might feel like you've got a little bit more swagger. So don't make the game any harder than it needs to be. And sometimes just mix it up a little bit. I'm still finding this really hard from the red tee because in the end of the day, you got to find greens, get it close enough that you can hold the putts. And yeah, that's not always easy. So that's, that's my little speech over. Let's get, let's take on this hole. Uh Oh, stay there. Wind's got hold of that. Jeez. Right. I'm down in the right hand side over by those bunkers. I'm not in the bunkers, but I'm in the rough. A couple of ways I could play this. I could try and really flop it up, which is high tariff. Oh, or I could just minimise the risk, but no, I'm not going to get it that close. Which is what I think I'm going to do, to be honest. Go. Sort of somewhere in between the two of them. Ooh. So I've got a knee knocker here for par and I'm going to think about what I did on the last part, which is just starting this right of centre, but most importantly, heading it out the middle of the putter. Yes. Okay. For a short par four, we'd like to look at birdie, but I feel like I've got away with one there. 
Hole number 15, really tricky hole actually, because it narrows, it really pinches in the driving zone and down the left, you're absolutely dead. Alcatraz over there. So you want to hit it somewhere out the right. Leave yourself a little flick on if you can. Perfect. 62 yards, quite similar to number I've had before, but it's up the hill and straight back into the teeth of the wind, so. That looks all right, a little bit left of it, but I've hit the green, but it's not quite close enough from that range. Difficult when you're below the level of the putting green to see, but see if I can hole a long one for the first time today. Go on. Oh. I feel like there's a storm coming in. Three holes to go. Two under par with three holes to play. Which means I'm on a 70, 69, 68, 67, 66. Do you know what that means, Emily? I'm two under par with three holes to play which means I cannot break the course record. Sad times, it's really sad. No, I can, I, to I totally can, because it's two par fives, I could eagle them. What am I talking about? Ah, right, okay. I'm two under par with three holes to play. So statistically, it's gonna be very difficult for me to break the course record. However, two of the last three holes are par fives and I could eagle them both. So stick with me here, team. Do not give up on me just yet. Emily, do you think I can do this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is one of the par fives and it's, it's, a it's a great hole. Really, really good chance of certainly getting a birdie if I can get a good drive away here. But, oh, God, I want an eagle. I really, really want an eagle. That's a bullet. Go ball, fly like the wind. 152 yards into the wind, seven iron. Albatross would be nice. Ah, uh, I've leaked that a little bit. Okay, chipping a putt for birdie or a chip in for eagle. Chip in for eagle, come on, come on, come on, come on. Right, this is very chip inable. A little bit of right to left. Go on. Oh, just broke. No eagle dance. I would have broken out my eagle dance. That's exceptional. <laughs> but she gets the bird. Three under par, two holes to go. Right, it's 207 yard par three a serious golf hole. Plays about seven yards downhill, 200 yards. Everything kicks down the hill as well. Between a four iron and a five wood. Five wood will fly to the green and hopefully land soft. A four iron's more that low chasing on kind of shot. I've decided to go with my five wood. I love this club. And this should land on the green, so hopefully it's gonna land softly. Draw, baby. Oh no. Oh no. Right, I've shot that out to the right. Over the bunker though, so probably a little chip in. A chip on. A chip in would be good, but a chip on, certainly. Little chip shot out of the rough here. Go on. Go, 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 go. <sighs> Not making this easy. I have got to make a par here because that will leave me three under going down the last. No, no, actually, Emily, I can't do it. If I, I'm, if I make a par here, which would be a great score now, <laughs> then if I, even if I eagle the last, that's five and my course record is six. I could albatross the last. Could albatross the last. Leave it. 
the dream is over. Because <sighs> I'm not getting a hole in one down the last. Oh, it's so sad. So, so sad. It's just not quite been good enough today. That moves me back to two under par, which means even an eagle up the last is gonna be four under par. I'm gonna give it my best shot so I complete the round, but I'm not gonna break the course record, guys. I'll never forget that day that I broke the course record. It was just the most amazing thing, and to do it in the club championship was even better. That was extra icing on the cake. So, yeah, and you know, listen, I am, I have surprised myself with where my golf is. Given a few years ago, I was told I would never hit a, hit a golf ball again. To be able to come out and still play pretty well, I'm, I'm happy and I feel like I've got the bug back again where I really, really do want to improve. My putting hasn't been good enough today and other parts of my game as well just haven't been tight enough. But I'm aware there will be tougher tests than this. The East Course at Wentworth, beautiful golf course off the Reds. It's not the toughest test in golf though and I will face more challenge ahead. But it's been great to get into the red and hopefully I can just, just finish the job up the last hole. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Beautiful hole. Par five, stroke index nine. All the fairway kicks from left to right. And you can see up by the green, there are hundreds of bunkers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bunkers I can see. 10, actually. Right, one last good drive. This beautiful par five closing hole. I'm, I'm still happy, you know. I'm a happy gal playing a course I've got wonderful, fond memories on. Life's pretty good. 178 yards, and it's a really, really stiff breeze gonna be playing 80, 185 at least. I've got my four iron, I'm gonna hit a little four iron up the left-hand side here. Go on, ball. Looks good. Okay, ball below my feet. Whenever the ball below your feet like that, it's always gonna move from left to right in the air. And the opposite is true when the ball's above your feet. I'm gonna move the other way. Right, I've got the 60 degree in my hand and I've decided just to loft up to see if I can just get this straight in the hole. It would be a bloody great way to end, wouldn't it? Go on. Oh, just fell away. Not bad. Well, in she goes for a birdie. There we go. Well, I haven't achieved what I set out to achieve, or at least I wanted to give it a go, to break my own course record around the East Course at Wentworth, which was a 65. But we have broken into the red, and I feel really chuffed about that. Thanks so much for watching this episode, guys. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, because we've got another video coming to you very, very soon.